Hey guys, it's Charlie. It's April 15th, tax day, Thursday. Um, that little girl you saw was at a tax day protest today that I was at. Uh, it, her sign was hilarious, 42 grand in debt, and all I have is a dollhouse. Um, I just want to report briefly on that uh, on the rally that I attended. I would say it was 50% larger than uh, the one I attended last year, uh, and the people were certainly more vocal and uh, certainly more upset. And why shouldn't they be? Because we were 100% right when we were out last year on tax day saying bigger government's coming, more taxes are coming. And it's now official. I mean, we've, we've passed uh, health care legislation due in great part to the senator of Montana, Max Baucus, who, who helped write the thing, or at least his special interest uh, backers help write the thing. And now we have it. It's here. You have to have insurance just to be a citizen. If that isn't a tax, if that isn't an increase of government, I don't know what is. And even though we had reporters last year on the mainstream media CNN uh, a reporter I remember specifically at a tax day protest picked the, the, the simplest looking person they could out of a crowd and said, why are you here? The guy states he doesn't want higher taxes. And she says, what are you talking about higher taxes? Don't you know Obama just passed a tax credit for anybody making under 200000 a year? This was the whopping $15 per pay period uh, tax break that we all received. Those of us fortunate enough to still be working. What a gimmick, what a joke, um, what an absolute insult to the intelligence of thinking Americans. And truly, the thinking Americans were out today protesting. So if you were out there, I thank you very much. Um, on to a little bit of uh, economic news. You know, I, the last video I did was about uh, the reality that some people live in, you know. Namely, Daniel Gross, uh, who wrote this Time or, or Newsweek uh, cover story about how we're back. America's right back on track. Well, here's some facts that uh, Daniel might want to look up before he writes his next uh, prize-winning article. Fact number one, 367,056. That's the number of foreclosures in the month of March. Okay, That number was up 19% month-to-month and 8% year-to-year. We have now officially surpassed all records in foreclosures in the first three months of 2010. Jobless claims rose by an adjusted amount of 24,000 uh, jobs to 484,000 people filing for first-time unemployment claims. Unofficially, the unadjusted number rose 99,730 to 514,000. Okay, here's the thing. The people who are on emergency, the government is my master uh, unemployment benefits, the government holds my fate, Every time they convene to pass emergency legislation, those numbers have swollen to 5,800,000 people. That's how many people are on emergency unemployment benefits. 2,148,000. That's what it was this exact same time last year. So with the trillions and trillions of dollars being spent to save the too big to fails, banksters, okay, our economy has more than doubled uh, the number of people on emergency unemployment benefits with all this massive spending. What's coming our way? Well, you just need to open your ears to figure out what's coming our way. Ben Bernanke, on the 8th of this month, quoted as saying, Facing unsustainable budget deficit, the U.S. The US will have to make a difficult choice between higher taxes and social spending. Okay, Paul Volcker comes out shortly after talking about the VAT tax is now back on the table. Guys, look, nobody on Wall Street has paid for the crimes of destroying the economy of the Western world, and in fact, the entire world. Nobody has been answered, held accountable for that. No CEO is in jail. No criminal banksters in jail. In fact, they didn't even take a pay cut. You know, their bonuses are up, higher than they were in 2008. Record bonuses, record profits. Wall Street's up 70%. Newsweek's posting articles saying America's back on track. But 367,000 homes are foreclosed in the month of March? Are you kidding me? 7.9 million people are behind on their mortgage payments right now. Why do you think the economy has a 1% increase in spending? Could it be because 7.9 million people are living rent-free and all of a sudden they have an extra $1,000 or $1,200 a month that they're not paying mortgages with and they're not paying rent with? They're sitting in a house that the bank doesn't want to foreclose on because it doesn't want to show negative uh, assets on their balance sheets. This is simple. This is basic, simple, open your eyes math. The criminals on Wall Street 
are funding the criminals in Washington, they are fleecing this nation, and you and I are being sold a bill of goods. Happy Tax Day. That's all I got.